What is up? What's going on, boys and girls? Uh, I feel like I am living somewhere in one of the dimensions of hell this winter here in Iowa. I am looking out my window in my office, and today we've been having regular wind of about 30 miles an hour with gusts up to 50. I mean, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, when will this stop? When will spring come? When will new life flood the earth? I don't know. Maybe we are doomed forever. So, my name is Nate Sprout. If you don't know who I am, I am the irreverent reverend. Everything is uh, relevant and on the table. Uh, I will speak to you as no other minister would from... Because basically every minister out there is generally afraid of losing their pulpit so they can't speak to you bluntly like I will while I smoke a blunt. Anyway... So, see, there you go. Who would say that? I want to talk about uh, the Antichrist. It's, it's a, when you come from a fundamentalist Pentecostal background, such as me, myself, it is a topic where, um, that is, that is discussed, discussed quite often. And it's not just discussed quite often within a uh, background such as myself is it's, it's it's part of movies and books and television shows you know who is this mysterious man that is going to usher in this three and a half years of of plenty and then three and a half years of evil and you know how did how did we even come up with this figure anyway and how do we presume that it actually is a human being I think most people do assume that it's a human being just because of the descriptions given in John, but that doesn't necessarily make it not John, the revelation, the revelation to John. Um, but that does not make it necessarily so. What I want to talk about today basically is that I believe, well, I don't I don't have like a bedrock belief in this, but I propose. I propose that the Antichrist, will, the actual it, if there will be an Antichrist, the Antichrist is already on the earth and it is essentially computers, essentially technology, the internet, whatever you want to call it. It is this that is taking over everything uh, from the very use, the very devices that you're listening to this podcast, from the production of this podcast is all being created through the medium of essentially the Antichrist, okay? So, obviously, Jesus talked about many, the, the abomination of desolation, you know, that could be referred to uh, the emperor in Rome or the emperor in the temple and all of these things from, you know, 2,000 years ago. Uh, and that there's many antichrist, uh, Paul alludes to, there's many antichrist, uh, out there at the moment. And I think that's true. That's definitely true. There's many antichrist. Uh, all, all you have to do is be against Christ. It's not, it's a title that can be given to anyone, but the antichrist. What is the, who is the antichrist? And I'm going to kind of explain, you know, we are going to be tricked and duped. It says that even if it was not for, you know, like the grace of God, I don't have a Bible in front of me. I do, but I'm not opening it up. If it had, it's something like this. Even if it wasn't for like the grace of God, even the elite would be deceived because you're not going to know it. You're just not going to know it. It said you're not going to be able to buy or sell. Uh, you, you already see this. There's lots of places that don't accept cash. Cash is not king. It's it's plastic. So sooner or later, we're going to, you know, they, they say it's going to be the microchip or whatever. I don't know. I don't I, I, I don't have an opinion on that uh, necessarily. I, I would tend I tend not to believe that the mark of the beast is, you know, like an, uh, 
uh, a microchip or some kind of barcode. I, I tend to believe it's more of a spiritual thing where, you know, you give your heart and soul to over to this uh, way of life and, you know, you're, you totally turn your back on God. Uh, and we may be doing that right now through computers. I don't know. Uh, what I do know is that computers are taking over. They're taking over everything. And right now we are just at the beginning. This is just the beginning. People are, I, I've watched, uh, oh, a ser I watched a little bit of uh, a, doc a documentary, an interview with a guy that's running for president and who he is uh, trying to say that everyone in America sh could get paid a thousand dollars and we can tax automation because and he was really emphasizing on truck drivers because there's going to be uh, truck drivers that are not going to have jobs because there's going to be automated trucks on the roads taking over those jobs that can drive 24-7. Well, let me propose this. Let me, let me ante it up a little bit here. Um, I am going to vow, I'm, not, I'm going to venture off and say uh, 50, 60 percent of all occupations will be automated and they'll only be in existence, really, to keep us alive. Uh, we will use these automated devices. Um, I think at first it may sound really good. I mean, we may be able to pull this off and uh, we could ascend to a higher level consciously because we're not distracted by, you know, mundane work. Um that doesn't always make a lot of sense. So I think in some ways we could benefit from a totally automated society. In some ways it could be the destruction of us all if we decide that, you know, especially if the machines decide that, you know, the only reason why these people, we're, we're just serving these people so they can live. We're, we're, we're farming their land, we're making their food, we're, we're, healing them we're uh doing everything for these people and you know they could already write code so coders buy your job's gone you we the only coders will be the you know these ultra ultra smart people that um the you know the elite will pick pretty much only the elite people with mad skills will have jobs uh and sports I think I think sports will be one of the last things to go. Uh, we like we like our sports and we like to watch humans in sport. Although there's probably going to be more uh, sports that we already have esports where people play online games. I think sports are going to be more automated as well in the future. Why don't we watch uh, automated football players or types of football players, type like robots and the coaches and directors will make the plays and and try to outwit each other on the on the football field. There may not even be a football field. You know, think about this. Actors will be gone. We won't need actors. I mean, if you ever looked at some of the video games that are out there or some of the uh, some of the virtual reality sets that you can put on your head and Think about how good the animation will be in the future. It is only going to get better. You will not be able to tell the difference between a real life movie, a real life human, and uh, um, an animation, a computer generated person, a computer generated movie, a full feature film that is not intended to look like an animation, but it is an animation, uh, but you can't tell the difference. So we won't need actors. Uh, for a while, we'll still need the writers for these movies, but sooner, but it'll be much easier though, and more, uh, and probably better stories and when the computer writes the stories. And prints out a good movie. You know, you punch in what kind of detail, basic details you want. Bam. It, it scans over 
you know, hundreds of thousands of books and information and comes out with this just awesome, awesome uh, play. It's awesome script that you would never have, you would never be able to obtain all the information that is in the script right there within minutes. Uh, let's just look at your other professions. Doctors gone, lawyers gone. Anyone who, obviously, let's just rule out anyone who works like in fast food, service work, those kind of jobs gone. Um, I think the trades will still be around for a while. Certain trades, trades that work outside of factories. Um, now we're going to need factory, factory workers are going to be gone. That's just, that's a given. Everything, all that's going to be automated. When I mean doctors, gone, we got it. we're gonna to have to have some medical doctors, but generally, for practical purposes, if you want to go get checked, there'll be like a kiosk in the mall. All right, you can go sit down, insert your debit card or credit card, and then uh, you'll have like a machine. You put your arm in. It could even draw blood, take your blood pressure, check your heart rate. You can even do like scans of your body, and then next thing you know, it comes out, pumps out a diagnosis. And then if you need medication, it will automatically dispense the medication and then print out instructions to, uh, to recover. Bam. A doctor in a kiosk right there. And that'll be the same thing with so many different mental health care. We won't need therapists anymore. You, uh, you'll be able to sit down in a room and, you know, a very intelligent, nice voice will speak to you and be able to um, give you a nice therapy session right there. No more therapists needed. Um, so much. Everything will be automated. You name a job, it can be automated. If you can think it, the human can create it. We will create these positions. We will create these robots to replace our human workers because... First of all, this is going to be madly expensive to implement all of these things, but over time, it's going to be, it's going to save lots of money. And you, you know, think about this, a uh, doctor's office open 24 seven, everything will be open 24 seven, everything. You want to see a doctor, you got it. You want to see a therapist, you got it. You, you need to like, and say you need to order something. There won't be stores anymore. Your stores will be done. Done. Totally done. Uh, there'll be very, very few stores left. People may, there may be some stores, but people will just go to them for nostalgia. But for your basic needs, for stuff that you want, it'll be like Amazon, but better. Okay, so say I want to order my groceries at hy V. Well, they already do this now. You can order your groceries online and then you can, uh, they will pick your groceries for you, and then drive those groceries to your house. Bam, done. So here's how it's going to be in the future. They're going to get rid of all of that. I mean, there won't be no grocery store you can physically walk into. You will have groceries uh, stacked up and lined up that a machine did, and then you punch in what you want to order. Uh, the machine will go down the aisles, collect everything that you've ordered, and it will box them up. Uh, the machine will then roll them into an automated driverless vehicle that will drive to your house. And then you get out and then collect your groceries. 100% no human involvement other than you getting them out of the car. That is the way it will be, ladies and gentlemen. There will be no need for humans. And yes, you're saying, well, who's going to... What if something fails? These machines won't fail. They'll be able to fix themselves. Uh, like I said, machines can do coding now. These machines will be able to fix themselves. There won't be a need for anything. I mean, already, you know, people are like, think of the church. Think of uh, being a pastor. You don't, you won't need that. You just have your machine pastor. Uh, I mean, we're already doing podcasts and it's been people have been doing ministers have been doing televangel being televangelists. Uh, so much of that is going on already. You can get comfort, all the comfort that you need from your machine, your computer, uh, your device that's being set up inside your house. You won't even need to leave your house. All the pleasures of the world will be there. 
You know, you want to go on vacation, you go into a room, bam, you're on the beach. It'll be like Star Trek when you go in and you have a, a put in a program where like on the Matrix where you can be anywhere, anytime. We will, us humans, our, our survival will be solely based on the machines. And at first, it won't be so bad. At first, it's going to seem like, uh, you know, something we can control. Um, and here's the what I want you to look at it like. Think of, I can think of myself, you know, I'm uh, going on 39 years old. Man, I am old. Anyway, so going on 39 years old, and I can remember the days when cell phones were not something that everyone had. It was for the ultra rich, these large, big block brick phones. And then eventually came, you know, uh, smaller phones and then flip phones. And then people started getting them more. I remember when I was in the military, uh, the colonel I worked for had a cell phone and the government, you know, paid for it. But no one else very few people had self. So they're just expensive. Um, it wasn't until about 2005 till I got my first uh, little like flip phone. So now though, if uh, you take a kid that was born like the year 2000, take a kid that was born in 2005, um, who's like 14 years old today, take that same kid and try to explain how you don't need to use this cell phone, they are going to have a panic attack. I mean, they won't know how to live life without it. Uh, it's like uh, that one company that is offering $100,000 to someone to get off the, the internet, not necessarily the internet, but the phone or any smart device uh, over for... I think it is the internet. I don't know. They can still use a phone, but I think it's, I don't know what the exact rules are, but pretty much cutting them off from, you know, your smart devices. So that's tough. I mean, that's tough for me. That'd be tough for me to do. I, I, I'm always on my phone. I am, I'm serious. I'm an addict. I'm, I'm either playing a stupid game or I'm looking something up or I'm sc scrolling through social media. It's, it's constant. Um, it'd be, it'd be very difficult for me to make it that whole year. I may, I, I mean, maybe I would have the, the, the ability to, I don't know. So in several generations after we reach this point of where you basically don't even need to leave your house and still have this like awesome life, no matter where you live, you can have this awesome life. Um, you know, in your own mind anyway, you're having this great life. It may seem weird to us how you never leave a box, but you're having a great life. But it, no, it, it will be. It'll be all right. You know, you'll have all the comforts of the world inside your home, at least visually and sensory, uh, sensory wise, you will be, it'll be great. But us first generation people, if it's us, but it probably won't be, this is probably down the line, the first generation of this will know that they can revert this, that they can go outside, that they're, they have experienced, you know, nature for what it is. And they, they know the difference between reality and virtual reality. It's there. The problem is the grandkids, the great grandkids and the great great grandkids. That's when we have the problem. That's when you have this idea of, you know, I don't know how to ride a horse or I don't know how to, you know, what are some things that, you know, were just commonplace that you did like in the 17, 1800s that everyone did and you shouldn't, that's just life, you know how to do it. Like maybe it's riding a horse. Uh, people ride horses today for sport, but they don't ride horses to get around like your car. All right. So you, the, the, basically if the machine shut, shut down or they decided to turn on us, we would be doomed. We literally would be doomed. It would be the end of humanity. Uh, there would be very few people left. You people would be scouring the history books, but I don't even know if people would even have the physical capability to even revert. Um, 
I think some may. I think I think some may, but I think some may not. I don't know. And I think that's where the danger in lies once the technology grows so much. And even by then, I'm talking about, you know, basic, uh, basic, basic, you know, automation right now. But in a few hundred years, can you imagine the automation that will be taking place then? It'll be, it'll be, um, you won't even be able to recognize the world. You won't be able to recognize it. It'll probably be desolate. Uh, eventually, it will be like the Matrix, where people were just living in, in, in a pod. And in that pod exists a reality that's pumped into their brain. And everybody will be living in this pod. And basically, the machines will be keeping humans alive. That's, that's kind of it. And essentially, there, there will be no humanity anymore. There will just be this species of these individuals that have brains and a conscience and a soul, but it's trapped in this body already that will be enclosed in a pod, giving them an artificial existence in their mind. And when they die, they just their body just dies, and maybe they go to heaven or hell or wherever, united together in the great singularity. But what, what what's going on on Earth? is a total breakdown of humanity. Jesus talked about, you know, the body of Christ is the people. The church is the body of Christ. And when you take that away, when, when you take that away, you know now that the Antichrist is the machine. Because the Antichrist is, he's, it's the, the machine has essentially divided the church. The, the, the Antichrist has essentially destroyed Christ on earth because there is no more Christ on earth. It's only you and a pod. And, you know, and we're, we're starting to see the effects of that now where people are distant. They're always on their phones, like I was saying, always on social media, always doing... Uh, they're, they're not getting out as much because they don't need to. You, you can order food now. You can order almost anything you need to survive now. You know, you don't even need to be out in the elements. You can take a vehicle to an airplane to the beach. Uh, you, um, there's so much now that divides us, where people are getting their their human interaction from from machines. Our bodies will evolve. Uh, we will probably become sh- shorter or taller or thinner i don't know less muscular uh it it will basically be to fit into the world of the technology that will be rising up around us that we created that we created to make our lives easier and essentially our lives will become the easiest they've ever been we'll be living in a simulation a complete simulation but within that simulation, I don't know what what's, what is taking place within that simulation. I have no idea. Or are we already there? You could look at it that way. Are we already there? And all I'm doing is speaking to nobody. It's just me. And I'm talking to myself, essentially. Um, zeros and ones or quibits, or whatever they come up with in the future to make this reality real, seem real. There's nothing, nothing, nothing at all. It's just, a, it's all made up, and I'm in some kind of pod, uh, like in the Matrix. I know I use that. I know so many, so many people use that because it's so, it's so possible. I think we can think that that, that could happen. That could happen. Given, given the rate that technology advances that could happen, and essentially, I think it's a good argument to say that technology is the Antichrist. Or, techno- or I could be wrong, and technology will bring us to a higher consciousness to where you know, we won't have to devote so much time to work. We can devote our time to enlightening our inner selves and developing our spiritual nature. 
I don't know if that's going to be the one that is chosen, though, because that would be the hard route. The easy route would be, you know, to just get sucked in and and allow our base urges to take over. It's interesting. It's interesting, really. You know, it's interesting. If you took, you know, Jesus from 2,000 years ago and brought him here, I, I don't know what he would think. He would probably think this is insane. But, I mean, there would be similarities. It'd be sim- I'm just looking around. You know, I got swords on the wall. There were swords in Jesus' time. There was, uh, you know, cups and things. But as far as, you know, the computers and the fancy designs of the chairs and uh, things like that, uh, the craftsmanship would be very much elite. But, yeah, I mean, I think you could see definitely some similarities, even if from from 2,000 years ago. I don't know what the similarities would be, you know, 2,000 years from now. Look how much we've advanced in 2,000 years. How much more are we going to advance in 2,000 years? Or I think it could go the other way as well. Uh, we could end up being back living in a, in a world with less technology than they had 2,000 years ago. I'm kind of a proponent of the idea that, you know, people 20,000 plus years ago were much smarter than we are today. That there was some kind of event that took place that wiped out technology that essentially we have been, uh, we had to start all over. And how many times have we had to start all over? You know, the earth's been around for a long, long time. And how many times have uh, humanity, has humanity wiped itself out and we've came back like a freaking cancer that just won't die? You know, because I mean, that's what we do to the earth anyway. The earth's fight like finally, they're finally, finally killed themselves. So we can, we can finally, Mother Earth can finally uh, restore and uh, the ozone layer can heal and there won't be roads and tearing down of the rainforest and all these things. Animal life can thrive without those stinking humans that keep coming back to this planet. Why? And then we think of religion and how that has a, to play in all of this and how that drives us and motivates us. It certainly motivates me, obviously. I mean, my whole deal is religion, but a religion on a different kind of level, I suppose, than most. But I don't know. There's, there's a lot of uh, New Age ministers out there uh, that are preaching the good news of love without damnation. I think, if anything, if anything, it's good, it's fun to talk about subjects like this. Uh, But as we are and as we live right now, I definitely think it's important that we still hold on to love. We still hold on to uh, being good to each other. Looking at the, no matter what technology comes up, we can utilize that for good and not to forget about humankind not to be too greedy we're going to be greedy but don't be too greedy and be the best that you can be uh, at being a good human being and that sums up Christianity in my book it's really simple all right ladies and gentlemen boys and girls It was a pleasure talking with you for this half hour of the Backyard Preacher podcast. Uh, I don't know what we'll talk about next weekend, but it'll be something fun. I'm sure something will come to me uh, as we, as I like to integrate social things, conspiracy theories, and religion, generally Christianity, all into one, and we just run with it. So thank you for listening. Remember, if you like this podcast, please share this podcast. If you don't like it, share it anyway. Talk a bunch of crap about it. I don't care. 
Thank you so much. God bless, and we'll see you next time.